Some of the worst suffering of my life has been during periods of insomnia as a result of my spiritual awakening process. So today we're going to talk all about the Kundalini awakening process and the way that it can adversely affect your sleep quality. Talk a little bit about sleepless nights, insomnia. As well, I want to share a little bit of understanding about why we go through difficulty sleeping to, you know, give a bit of a silver lining to some of these challenges so that we don't feel so victimized by it because there are some good benefits that come out of insomnia. You know, it's a bit of a stretch, but we have to look for the silver lining in all of these things, especially as we go through Kundalini waking process. Otherwise, we become disempowered, end up like victims, and that's no way to go through this process. So that's why I'm wearing these blue blocker glasses today because we're talking about sleep. I kind of like them, but my girlfriend thinks they're creepy. So I'm going to take them off before I creep you out. And we'll talk a bit more about blue blockers and things like that in a second. But right off the bat, I want to remind you that Kundalini awakening... It's a 24-7, 365 process. What this means is that once it begins, it doesn't end ever, okay? So this doesn't mean that you're going to experience negative, difficult, challenging things for the rest of your life. No, but the process itself, overall, it just continues. It doesn't end. So you may have had an awakening experience where maybe energy rose up your spine or entered down your cr through your crown, um, you know, maybe yesterday, last week, 20 years ago, whatever it was. Since that point, the process continues, okay? So once we're in this process, there's no getting off the path. There's no turning it off. It's just our life now. And of course, that means that when we go to sleep, this process continues. So sometimes people think like, you know, going to sleep is, you know, we're getting a break from this process. Not necessarily. Process continues 24-7, 365 for the rest of our lives, okay? And that doesn't mean, like I said, that there's, there's going to be like debilitating negative things for the rest of our lives. No, even the positive things that we experience as a result of Kundalini Awakening, continue on through our sleep as well. So what I mean is that there are periods that may come where you'll be able to enjoy bliss, peaceful, spacious awareness, heart-centered consciousness, uh, you know, states of, of samadhi even during sleep, right? So this can happen temporarily, can happen maybe consistently. It doesn't happen for everybody, but for many of us, it does at some point along the way. It happens to me occasionally where I go to sleep and I'm completely aware while my body's sleeping and it feels pretty incredible it's pretty spacious so i want to just let you know like yeah there's even good things that happen as a result of this process that continue on during sleep as well i don't want to scare you by saying oh you know this process doesn't end no even the benefits don't end either the the difficult work is you know finite you could say there's a certain finite amount of stuff that needs to be purified and upgraded and once we go through this transformation then we get to live the rest of our lives in that transformed state okay so keep that in mind just to give you a little bit of encouragement as you go through this process okay so the other thing to understand here is that though there are some difficult things that can be addressed through a certain practice or technique or something you can do to help mitigate some of the difficulty and discomfort at some points some of the difficulty we're faced with, we just have to ride it out. That's just it. We just have to ride it out. So what I'm sharing here, you know, it may help to manage some of your sleep quality, but there will still be sleepless nights. You just have to ride them out. You know, maybe you experience, for example, lightheadedness. There are things you can do to relieve lightheadedness. You know, you can ground yourself. You can walk barefoot. You can eat, right? But sometimes none of that works. Sometimes you just have to ride it out. And through riding it out, we learn. We develop, we learn acceptance, we learn surrender. It's difficult, you know, it's not something anybody wants to hear when they're in the midst of, you know, you know, long stint of insomnia or, you know, long, uncomfortable, uh, you know, dealing with signs of, of this transformation that they can't, you know, manage. But some of these things, you just have to ride it out and, and that's how we learn acceptance, okay? So with all of that said here, think about what the most ideal circumstances would be to go through Kundalini Awakening, right? Maybe you went to a community, or there's multiple masters, all perfectly healed and transformed, and they all know exactly about this process. And they're great teachers, so they explain to you in a way that you understand before any of this begins for you. They explain to you what Kundalini is, they give you a whole breakdown of how things might go, they give you the practices, to let you know that it's all going to be okay, and then they give you some, pr some practices that you can now prepare your system for the awakening before it happens. So you learn how to meditate, you develop a sense of faith through understanding, and you have examples of people that have gone through the process that are stable, okay? So you have generally quite confident about it. And then they gave you some practices to awaken the energy now that you're ready, 
you awaken this energetic force, you begin to go through the process, and you're in this environment where they understand what you're going through. So they don't expect you to go to your, you know, your nine to five job. They don't expect you to be answering emails. They're not coming at you with all kinds of, of, of you know, interpersonal relationship drama. They're making it as easy for you as possible, right, to go through Kundalini awakening. So that's like the ideal circumstance. However, most of us go through this process in the most unfavorable circumstances, right? We're here in the West in a culture that has completely disconnected itself from any sense of spiritual evolutionary force within us. Um, you know, no idea of energy, no idea of, you know, deep healing. Um, we're not prepared. Very few people out there talking about this. So we don't know what's going on. We're confused. And then it's sometimes somehow just starts randomly hap it just randomly happens spontaneously, you could say. You know, maybe it's brought on by drugs. Maybe it's brought on by some yoga class that we went to. We thought yoga was going to help us to, you know, relax. And suddenly we're going through Kundalini Awakening. Or we thought meditation was going to help us to just chill out. And suddenly we're going through Kundalini Awakening. And we're completely unprepared. So all of all aspects of our life are going to be affected by this. Just makes sense, right? Including sleep. Okay, so just want to put that out there. Of course, sleep is going to be affected when you go through this process in like the most unfavorable conditions. Of course. Okay, so be grounded. Take a step back, look at it this way. So you feel less like, like I said, you feel a little bit less of a victim and confused about why this is happening to you. I'm explaining why. It's because you're going through Kundalini awakening in very, very difficult conditions. Okay. And so do we say, oh, this, why me? Why did it have to happen to me in the West? Why couldn't I have been born in an ashram or something? No, there's no point in worrying about things like that. Instead, we say, okay, I'm here in unfavorable conditions going through Kundalini Awakening. It's affecting my sleep. It's affecting my, my life, etc. What can I do? Well, you improve the conditions. Okay. So what this means is you have to give yourself some time during your day in which you can go through this process um, without having to, you know, cut into your sleep time. Because like I said, this energy is going to do what it's going to do and it's going to do what it's going to do 24-7, 365. So if you go to work, you come home, then maybe you drink beer or alcohol or do drugs or watch TV or distract yourself with all this random crap. And you then you try to go to sleep and you're not giving yourself like a carving out time to allow this energy to work through you. Well, then it's going to say, okay, you didn't give me any time. So we're going to do it at night and then nighttime. Because of course, why, why nighttime? Because it's the most ideal circumstance, right? You're, you're in solitude. You're alone. Either you're, you're maybe you're with a partner, but they're sleeping. So you're basically alone. You're not moving. You're just laying there. You're not distracted. You know, no screens and stuff. You're just laying there. So the energy can start working on you. It sees sleep as the opportunity. So if you give it a more ideal opportunity during the day, then it doesn't have to cut into your sleep time. Now, this energy is intelligent. It's the, intel it's, it's the infinite intelligence of the universe. It's the divine mother. It's Shakti. It's, it's, it's God. It's the divine. It understands and it can respond to the way that you uh, approach this process and it will work with you cooperatively. It's, it's compassionate. It's, um, it's understanding. Okay. So as it teaches us through difficulty, but what we have to do is we have to acknowledge this. Okay. I'm going through Kundalini awakening process. I need to give myself some time. So that means maybe you're carving out time to meditate. Maybe you're just going to carve out time, just to lay in bed and allow this energy to move through you and do what it has to do. Maybe you're going on walks. Maybe you're journaling. You're doing something in your solitude and space that is dedicated to allowing this process to carry itself out, okay? And and the main idea there is that you allow whatever needs to arise to arise. Sometimes this energy is going to move your body. It's going to you know give you kriyas. You're going to you know be having spasms. Maybe emotional releases are going to happen. You might have to cry. You might have to go through some difficult memories. Um, you got to give yourself permission to go through this, knowing that you're going through a purification process. This is what I mean by creating more ideal circumstances for yourself, okay? As well, as we go through this process, we become more sensitive to everything, okay? So what that means is we have to be more mindful of our sleep hygiene. So we have to maybe wear things like blue blockers. Maybe we have to cut the screen time before going to bed, okay? We've got to be mindful of maybe there's like little lights in our room. Maybe we need blackout curtains. Uh, maybe we have to set a sort of uh, alarm that kind of works with our sleep cycles to wake us up at a more ideal time in case we didn't get too much sleep at night. We've got to become much more mindful of, of our, our sleep hygiene so that, you know, we can do our part to create the most ideal environment and context for us to sleep when we are able to sleep, okay? So sometimes, you know, and I, I don't get me wrong, I don't wear blue blockers regularly, um, you know, I have blackout curtains and stuff, but like my sleep hygiene is not perfect. Okay. I don't get me wrong. Um, 
but sometimes we have to like do these things before blaming kundalini right like some people want to blame kundalini oh kundalini i can't sleep at night well yeah but you're on like screens you know you're you're uh, maybe um sleeping in like like a really warm room cold room is ideal to sleep you know maybe you're uh and taking drugs or something that's keeping you up at night um and and so like we need to address those things first and then we can blame kundalini but the thing is once we address self-care most of the time the, the kundalini stuff like the challenges go away and there's nothing to blame. There's nobody to blame, okay? So it's very important to understand this kind of stuff. Don't want to just blame Kundalini and then not take care of ourselves, okay? We don't really have to do much throughout this process. Sometimes people think we got to do all this like pranayama stuff and start doing weird meditations, visualizing third eye stuff and all this kind of stuff. We don't really have to do anything like that. What we have to do is self-care. That's very, very important. We have to take care of this body, which means be mindful of our sleep. Like I said, sleep hygiene, routine. Okay, be mindful of the food that we eat. Be mindful of things like movement, right? Be mindful of uh, our emotions and being gentle with ourselves. That sort of self-care stuff is, is very, very important. That's all we really need to do. We don't need to start doing all this, you know, pranayama stuff or chanting in different languages and stuff like that. If you like doing that stuff, sure. But bare minimum, self-care, okay? If you're not doing self-care, can't blame Kundalini for your problems. Keep this in mind. I know this is a little bit straight talk, but... I, I'm here to snap people out of being victims to this process. I'm here to snap people out of thinking that this process is ruining their life. No, this process is enhancing your life, but you got to cooperate with it. And, and cooperation, you're, you're being asked to do the bare minimum, which is what? Take care of yourself. Like basic stuff, right? Okay. As well here, it's important to keep in mind that if you don't address this stuff, if you don't address sleep, for example, you open yourself up to serious mental health issues psychosis mania sometimes people experience these things during kundalini awakening and in my opinion i think that it's not directly because of kundalini i think it has to do with sleep i think that they're depriving themselves of sleep they're not really giving themselves the proper context to sleep which is what kundalini awakening demands and then they experience things like i mentioned and they want to say it's because of kundalini no, it's because you didn't sleep during your Kundalini awakening process. Now I know this is a very, very you know difficult topic to talk about. Um, it's it's nuanced. Um, you know, there, there's a lot to be said, and I'm not a doctor, um, but just something to keep in mind here. Like I said, we don't want to blame Kundalini for everything when there's things that we could do to you know help. Okay, so like I said, even with all of that, there are going to be some periods where you know you just can't sleep. You just have to ride it out, and during those periods of riding it out, they can become very, very uh, spiritual and devotional if you sort of turn it into a, a time to practice sadhana spiritual practice so maybe you're praying maybe you're you're meditating if you like to do mantras uh, maybe you're, you're doing mantras you're contemplating it's, a, it's like a little retreat like an eight hour retreat at night no distractions it's quiet and you can do deep spiritual work if your body's not able to sleep so you can turn it into like deep deep uh, opportunities to make some some great uh, progress on your spiritual journey okay and and through those practices through those nights where you know you can't get to sleep no matter what you do even if you got perfect sleep hygiene we learn to surrender we learn to accept right it's through difficulty that's how we learn nobody learns to surrender when things are going great surrender is so key but nobody learns it unless there's difficult things that are happening okay so keep this in mind it's how, we, it's how we snap ourselves out of victim mode is by looking for the silver linings. You can also make deals with the Kundalini Shakti, this divine mother force, this energy. You know, it's the divine. It's God. It's, it's infinite intelligence. It knows everything about you. It knows everything about the context of your life. It knows your responsibilities. It knows you have to get to work and get things done. It knows all of that. And it will respond to you if you relate with it in a personal way. So you can talk to it and say, hey, look, you know, you're not letting me sleep tonight. That's your will. I trust that, you know, it's going to work out. But at least tomorrow, please throw me a bone. Help me out at work. And then you let it go and you trust. And you'll see. Something will happen. You know, things will just be a little easier for you at work. In most most cases. Like, you know, maybe it's just a slow day. Or maybe your boss, for whatever reason, stops breathing down your neck. Things like that. Like... Like this intelligence is not just happening within within us. It is a personal, it's an intelligence that we can relate with on a personal level, communicate with it, and it operates in every dimension of life. It is 
the creative force of, of all existence. It's what animates nature. It's what has always been beating your heart. It's what moves the planets around the sun. It's the same intelligence. And so it can also influence your life through this sort of, you can call it miracles, you call it synchronicity, you can call it, you know, manifestation. It can, it can work with you in these ways. If you make these types of deals, sometimes you got to also make deals like, okay, I will give you one hour and you can do whatever you want, Kundalini, before bed. But please let me get some sleep. And if you give it that hour and you truly just surrender and let it move through you, let it bring up what it needs to bring up, it will keep its end of the deal and let you sleep. But you got to also keep your end of the deal. So you can develop this type of relationship with it in which you can, uh, like I said, relate with it on a personal level. And, and you'll see, like this is true prayer. These are true uh, ways to pray, like talking to the energy in this way. Okay. For myself, I've experienced very difficult, lengthy periods of insomnia uh, at multiple stages throughout my journey. And, um, you know, it was like so brutal. You know, sometimes I'd wake up after just like one hour sleep, like my alarm would go off, be like maybe like half an hour, one hour sleep. And then I'd be like, okay, I got to go, go to school or go to work or whatever it is I had to do. And then sometimes I would like tell people, you know, I, I forgot how to sleep. Like that's how I would describe it. I don't remember how to sleep. I've completely forgotten. And, um, you know, I was like a victim, right? So I would be complaining about it. And then what would happen was I recognized, okay, I got to stop thinking about this and just go to sleep. Stop thinking about it. And then I would kind of forget about it, trick myself, forget about it and, you know, try and go to sleep. And then somebody would remind me about it. Like, hey, how's the insomnia? Hey, have you been getting some good sleep? And I would be like, hey, stop talking to me about that. I don't, I don't want to hear about that anymore. I just want to forget about it. And still, like, for whatever reason, like, people just kept asking me about it. I guess it's because I, I made such a big deal about it. But anyway, uh, you know, this was, like, really, really difficult period of my life, um, periods of my life. But there's one particular instance where I was laying in bed. You know, I can't sleep, so I haven't been working out. I haven't been exercising. I haven't been eating well. I've just been a total mess. And I said, I'm not taking care of my body. Okay, I express this out loud. I'm not taking care of my body. And suddenly I recognized this distinction between I and my body. And I recognized I'm not my body. And this was incredibly liberating. And there was like, you know, this, this awakening took place. There was like this expansion of, of awareness. Suddenly I realized like, whoa, I'm not my body. I'm, I'm in my body, but I'm not my body. And yet I still have to take care of it as, as if it was something separate from me. It's like, it's like I have something that I have to care for. Okay. And so then I understood. And it, this was like a big sort of uh, shift very early on. Um, in my late teens and from there i recognized okay the insomnia like brought me to this realization without it i wouldn't have recognized this this liberation and you know these are ideas like they talk about in bhagavad gita you know we we are uh the body may die but but we continue on and so i i was given a direct experience in order to realize this for myself and insomnia is what kind of brought me there so I look back and I appreciate the insomnia, you know, it's, um, I, I say thank you. And, you know, I'm, I'm sharing this with you just to show that if you are like I was, you know, victimized, complaining, oh, I can't sleep, kundalini this, awakening that, this process sucks, blah, blah, blah. You're just in a state of disempowerment and it's, it's just like the process just drags on. Sometimes the process gives you challenging things, makes you feel like a victim to exhaust that out of your system. And so once it's exhausted, you have to find the silver lining in all of these challenges. You have to find ways to feel empowered by what's happening. Okay. You can't get through this as a victim. Like I, 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 I've said it before that this is my whole work is not even to talk so much about in, ins and outs of Kundalini Awakening just to snap people out of being a victim and to recognize you know you're being gifted with like incredible incredible transformation okay another thing to consider here is that Kundalini Awakening will cause energetic instability within your body what does that mean it means rather than having you know prana chi Kundalini Shakti being balanced throughout your system head to toe sometimes energy can pool up in the head okay and this can cause symptoms like insomnia anxiety maybe some Difficult mental health issues, loopy thoughts, feeling, feeling like, you know, all spaced out, depersonalization, derealization. We have to be mindful of the energetic balance within our body and how we can ground ourselves. So you have to find ways that work for you to ground yourself. Maybe it's moving, walking in nature, exercising, eating the right foods, 
there's many different interesting things that you can do. And they're all very, very safe. They're not like super crazy practices. Powerful thing you can do is just put your back against a tree uh, and just sit and meditate and allow the tree to ground you because a tree is like the perfect example of what it means to be balanced, right? You've got the branches up in the sky. We've got the root, roots deep down in the earth, right? Same idea. You want to be up in the crown chakra, open, transcendental, spiritual, but also have our, our, our worldly, worldliness or humanness, you know, balance in the root chakra as well. So a tree is a great example of that. So we can meditate with our back against a tree. This may relieve symptoms of being ungrounded, may relieve symptoms of insomnia, for example. Now, I've written an entire free book all about this called the No Nonsense Grounding Guide. It has very safe tips, principles, practices to help you to understand what I'm talking about here, to help you to ground yourself, which will in, in turn help you to sleep better um, if you're dealing with, you know, insomnia due to being ungrounded book is completely free. I wrote it because this is the most common issue that people approach me with. And it's the most, you know, difficult things that I've dealt with on my path. Okay. So check it out. It's completely free. Brandspirit.com. Just have to enter your email and you can get access to the book. The audio book is there. The PDF is there as well. Check that out. And in closing here, I just want to remind you self-care really self-care don't complain about this process and unless you have your self-care stuff dialed in and i know that it's easier said than done i know you know when we're feeling depressed feeling tired is difficult to you know take care of ourselves i understand i understand baby steps little things right maybe you just have to brush your teeth if you haven't done that in a while or take a shower or just be easy on yourself and say hey you know i'm tired i can't get you know, be as productive at work or I can't work on my projects or whatever. Self-care is is a, a something that can be, you know, just having a nice thought about ourselves, maybe just giving ourselves a little hug, taking a, just one deep breath, self-care. We start there in the most basic ways and we expand. And as we expand, we'll start to see the more that we're able to support ourselves and our bodies, our spirits, our minds, this Kundalini awakening, the difficult symptoms and signs of this transformation will start to just, you know, be a little bit more gentle with us okay so keep all of this in mind i hope that you all sleep well i understand i've suffered greatly as a result of insomnia um lately i have it under control you know i go to sleep and i cherish sleep in fact i think that i'm a little bit not even a little bit i'm very much attached to sleep i have a fear of being tired throughout the day as a result of all of the insomnia that i've had throughout my my journey in the past and so i'm trying to work on uh, not being so attached to sleep actually that's that's my uh my edge beyond which I'm growing at the moment. And so that's why this topic is really relevant to me lately because I've been thinking a lot about sleep and my relationship with it. So keep all of this in mind. I hope that, uh, you know, you got something out of this today. Give me a message. If, uh, if any questions about this, you know, drop a comment, send me an email. If you have any feedback, um, if you'd like to check out the other parts of this series, go ahead, check it out on my YouTube channel, podcast on Spotify or iTunes. Uh, the content there, it's um, it's evergreen content and it's, you know, like uh, even though it's old, it's still very relevant to this process. So check it out. I invite you to check it out. Let me know what you think about all of it. If you'd like to learn how to meet with me one on one, if you'd like to make a donation or if you'd like to contact me with any questions about your spiritual awakening journey, you can visit brentspirit.com to find out all about that. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, much love and peace.